Hello friends, welcome to Queen Bee Paradise. Today's video is another interesting topic from my kitchen series. It's my kitchen pantry organization. I do not have a separate pantry in my kitchen. I'll be showing you how I've organized all my grocery supplies in the available cabinets in a convenient way. I'll also be sharing some important tips that I follow in my kitchen to avoid wastages and overstocking. I'm sure you will find these tips useful, so please watch the video till the end. Before getting started, please subscribe Queen Bee Paradise and hit the bell so you won't miss any new videos from this channel. First, let us start with my most favorite cabinet in my kitchen. So this is the place where I store most of my monthly supplies. When it comes to any organization, I like to keep all the items visible. For me, anything out of sight is out of mind. So in order to avoid any wastages, I like to store these items in transparent containers. These containers are BPA free food grade containers which comes with an airtight lid as well. As these containers are sleek, they are very good space savers. If I had stored them in round containers, I couldn't have accommodated these many containers in this cabinet. If you notice, I have chosen containers in three different sizes as per my requirements. I live in Bangalore and for this weather condition here, the pulses and lentils get spoiled if I store them for a longer time. So I usually dry fry the pulses and lentils in a pan and cool them completely and store them in airtight containers. Rava or semolina will also be dry fried before storing. Dry frying not only increases the shelf life but also enhances taste while cooking. But one drawback is the pulses and beans which are dry fried cannot be sprouted. So I'll store some of the items like green peas, green moong dal etc in freezer if I want to store them for a longer time. So it can be sprouted when required also it stays for a longer time. Another thing that I've observed is whenever I buy pulses from open bags in shops it tends to catch insects much faster compared to the ones which are available in packets. It could be because it's been touched by many hands before we actually buy and store them. So whenever I buy from open bags, I buy minimal quantity and don't plan to store them for a longer time. Now let us see how I've stored the spices and masala powders in my kitchen. The very frequently used spices and oils are stored on the kitchen countertop itself for easy access. I have already posted a detailed video on the kitchen countertop organization as part of our kitchen series. Please check the videos if you haven't already. I will ensure to leave the links in the description box. Just above the gas stove there are two cabinets in which I have stored the frequently used items so it can be grabbed quickly while cooking. On the left cabinet, on the top, I have stored the dry fruits or nuts. On the bottom shelf, I have stored all the spices in a way that everything is visible and easy to access. I have utilized the vertical space efficiently, but I have not used any special organizers to do so. Let us see how I have done this. I have used waste thermocol packing materials which we usually get along with online product deliveries. I have just stacked them together to give a height. So we can pick the containers without disturbing the other containers. I have labeled all the masala powders using permanent markers to avoid confusions. In these glass jars, I have stored the whole garam masalas. On the sides, I have placed the frequently used turmeric and asafoetida. On the right hand side on the top, I have stored different kinds of papads and fryams in glass canisters. Below is my tea or coffee station. Again, here I have utilized a vertical space to keep everything visible. I have used waste cardboard boxes to give a height here. I am using these square containers to store tea, coffee and badam milk powder. I bought these containers from DMART. It's looking very pretty and it's very functional as well because the lid is attached to the container. On this side, I've stored the instant coffee powders. In the space left, I've stored boost green tea and a sugar pourer. On the other side, I have a cabinet where I store tamarind, cashmere chili powder and coriander powder which are more in quantity. 
Below I have the salt and sugar containers behind which I have stored less frequently used items like jaggery, dead syrup etc. Let us see what I have stored in this spice box. In this spice box I have stored all the items I would frequently need while preparing variety rices. It is convenient for me to keep in this box in a single place. I keep refilling these items frequently. Now let's see how I store the additional stock of grocery items which did not fit in the containers. In a kitchen drawer I have placed a big basket like this and I store all the open packets of pulses and spices in this basket. I ensure to secure the packets with rubber bands before dropping it into the basket. This is to avoid spillages. The additional stocks which are not opened will be stored on the sides like this. Before going for monthly grocery shopping, I'll first take the items from this basket and refill the containers. Since all the containers are visible, I can just click pictures to check the stock I need and prepare a grocery list. This way I avoid overbuying things which are already available at home, so wastages are completely avoided. Let us see how I've stored the grains like rice, wheat flour and other items. In the drawer below, I have four big containers. In this container, I have stored the regular ponni rice which I use daily. Atta, millets and basmati rice are stored in separate containers like this. As we consume more of rice, I usually buy 25 kg rice bag. This container holds around 7 kgs. After filling this container, I stored the remaining rice in this big container along with the rice bag as such. I'll drop few red chilies in the rice bag and tie it properly before keeping it into this container. This is to avoid insects. In these two containers, I've stored idli rice. I've stored few coconuts here. I will generally de-shell them or grate them and store it in freezer. Till I do that, it will be stored here. If you want to store coconuts for few weeks, you should select the ones which has the ice covered and not exposed. Also, it should be kept upside down like this to stay fresh for at least few weeks. Now let us see how I have stored the flour items like basin, maida, etc. In this pull-out rack, I have stored them in steel containers along with their packets as such. Why I store them in Dairon covers is, one is I can read the names to avoid confusion and also I will know the expiry date. I use these items less frequently so it would be better for me to have the expiry date in it as such. Finally, I have some oils stocked up here. I buy cold pressed oils in bulk. I use different types of oil like groundnut oil, gingerly oil and coconut oil. So I have stored the stock here and refill the oil containers when required. At the entrance of the kitchen, I have kept my refrigerator. Behind the refrigerator, an open tall rack is placed. I use these shelves to keep the snacks, jars and fruits at the top. Below, I have kept few baskets and stored onion, potato and garlics in open baskets. This way, they stay for longer time. That's all about my grocery organization. Hope you liked the idea shared in this video. If you had liked the video, please give me a thumbs up and share the video with your friends and family. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.